we'll go ahead and get started with preserving your story. This is really a program that is looking at the home archivist. Some not a professional, not someone with a huge budget, but you know, somebody doing this from home who wants to take care of old family heirlooms or mementos. Um, we're dealing mostly with what we would call traditional keepsakes, and then a little bit at the end with more modern, um, looking at this new modern world and how we manage our memories. I did try to take into account how somebody at home would do this, um, things like skill and expense. So hopefully I don't list anything that's outrageous for you. Is that someone talking to me? There we go, we'll move to the next slide. So traditional keepsakes. Photos, letters, recipes, newspaper clippings, souvenirs, postcards. I know some of you have a postcard collection you've told me about. Um, greeting cards, Bibles, family Bibles. Um, I'm not lucky enough to have one of those, but it'd be really cool if I did. Do any of you have a family Bible that you're protecting? Was that Roz raising her hand there? Yep. Books, I do have some of those. I showed one before at another one of the meetings for the Maslin Local History and Genealogy Society that is an original print of a book from the 19th century that one of my ancestors wrote, so. And textiles, I do wanna spend a moment on textiles today, though I'm not as much of, you know, as, as well informed on textiles as I am on paper, but we do wanna visit that a little bit. So how many of you, I got Bibles, what other types of traditional keepsakes do you guys have? Roz? I have um, my, I, I showed it at a previous meeting. I have my uh, great, great aunt's um, autograph book. Mm -hmm. So it's paper, really definitely paper, yeah. It's got a neat old cover. It's beautiful in my grandmother's yearbook. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have something really cool that they're keeping from their family? Got a glass cane. Ooh, that's nice. At least glass is a little easier to preserve than, than uh, paper. Yeah. <laughs> I have a hymnal that was written by my great great grandfather. Oh, wow. And has a little bit of a history in it as well. I purchased it. Oh, wow. That's really cool. Yeah. You know, why should we worry about protecting these things? Well, some of us are planning to pass them down to the next generation. I don't have children, but uh, my nephew, who's 11, of all my nieces and nephews, he's the youngest. I have some that are in their 30s, um, but my one who's 11 is the most interested. So that not that kind of weird? <laughs> Usually, people, you know, they don't get interested until they're a little older, but he's probably the one going to inherit my stuff. But I mean, it's a legacy. It's your family's history, but it's also local history. If you think about that, you know, you live in an area and you are part of that history for that area. So that's another reason to preserve some of these things. Now, what are some of the places you guys store these things? Nobody wants to say. <laughs> Anybody, Roz? I have a couple of the things, the family Bible and the autograph book on a bookshelf. My grandmother's yearbook is in the attic in the trunk. And um, I have a postcard collection and it's um, kind of stuffed in the, another bookcase. Okay. I will give you a little final exam at the end because you're gonna, no, I don't like to come and preach at people. This is how you should do it and you know, act like I'm perfect. So I took pictures around my house for you guys to assess me at the end on my storage methods. What do you think? Are you up for that? Yes. Okay. <laughs> you can call me out. <laughs> so preservation. The key to preserving documents is to keep them in an acid-free environment, humidity controlled, right? Those are two important elements. Um, temperature and acid level because they need protection from a variety of things, light, heat, humidity, 
the acids in the papers that I just mentioned, you'll see the word acid free so many times on this slide that you will never forget it <laughs> on this presentation, acid free, acid free. Um, adhesives are also a problem. Um, other objects, pollutants, and also insects and other types of pests. So those are some of the things we're gonna talk about. And we wanna get the don'ts out of the way, right? Let's get that, let's go, let's get that out of the way so we can go to the do's. Um, don't use tape. You can see on the image to the right there, what happens to tape over time. If you have to use tape, they do make acid free, which I will show. Well, here, well, you can kind of see, there's like, this is a mending tape. And I'll show this kind of later too, when I do my list, but you know, you they make tapes and glues that are acid free, but uh, only when needed. Um, rubber bands, you guys know what happens to rubber bands when they get old. Look at those, that pile up there. Uh, Mandy at the museum actually gave me these pictures, right, from one of her preservation presentations. Um, you know, think about how they decay over time or they get hard and then that gets left on your document. So you don't want to use rubber bands. Never laminate. There was a big trend to try to laminate things to save them um, at one point and they figured out that's not a good plan, that you actually can damage it from the heat, from acid within, um, the pressure during the application. So you can lead to more deterioration of the document by laminating. So, but there was a trend for a little while, right? To laminate things. Found out that wasn't so great. <laughs> um, glue, um, not, you know, they do make archival type glue for scrapbooking, but again, only sparingly in emergency um, and the old style photo albums. Who has the magnetic sticky, they call them magnetic, but to me, I always thought of them more like glue, like a sticky, those old style photo albums. How many of you have those? They're awful. Yes. And they're really bad for your pictures. Mm -hmm. And that sometimes if you leave them in there long enough, they actually adhere and you cannot separate the picture any longer from that clear cover. Mm. So try not to use those if you can. And if you have stuff, I'm gonna show you a tool you can use to maybe help get them out of those type books here later. Um, it's a spatula tool. You can uh, put the ID above them too to keep people from touching them because handling them with their bare hands. If you see that bottom picture, can you really tell what's going on in the bottom picture on my slide there? Let me see, I'm, I might be able to zoom in on it. Let me try this. Let's get creative. Can we zoom? I've got three monitors that I got to figure out how to get from one. There we go. Can you guys see that? Oh, you can kind of make out that there's a building in that picture. <laughs> when I first saw it, I thought it was some kind of artwork. Those are all fingerprints. <sighs> my friends, when I was in my 20s, used to make fun of me. Anybody watched the show Friends back in the day? Yeah. Well, they called me Monica because I used to get all upset if people touched my finger, my, their, my pictures with their fingers. Yeah. And I want to validate myself right here with this image, right? This is showing you why you shouldn't get fingerprints on pictures because over time they eat into the pictures and this, these are permanent on this image. And you can see the little swirls, right? Of the thumbprints. Now I got it. Get back to the right monitor. There we go. So, bare hands, there's a debate, okay, about this. So, let's move to the do page and then I'll tell you about the debate. As soon as I figure out, I got three, three monitors going. There we go. Nope. So I got to go up. There we go. Can I do it here? There we go. Do's, the positives, right? White gloves. These are some more archival types, so they're a lot thinner than white gloves. Does anybody have white gloves at home that they use for touching old photographs or anything? There's debate about using these on documents. What do you think the problem might be with using gloves 
when looking at an old document. They get dirty. <laughs> they get dirty. Well, when you put gloves on, even think about your winter gloves, doesn't it change the way that you can feel things and, and your dexterity? Mm -hmm. So these are special, they're very thin, so they help with that. But if you're just buying white gloves on Amazon, you could actually, because you can't feel the document, do damage to the document. So you want to weigh it, right? Which, what is more damaging to this particular item? The oil is in my hands or not being able to feel what I'm doing. So you, you, you kind of have, we'll have to assess that, right? Home archivist. Um, these are special and nice. I've not encountered these even when I went to look at documents before they've been more the thicker white gloves. So these are kind of nice for that. But if you're going to not use gloves, just make sure you don't have any lotion or anything like that on your hands that they're well washed, right? Um, I ran into recently sanitizer. Looking at old documents and I had sanitizer on my hand and I had to stop and think, oh, wait, I just sanitized my hands because protocol and all. So I had to put that in the back of my head not to do that while I'm looking at old documents and things. So white cotton gloves, that's a debate depending on the item. Acid-free plastic sleeves. So you can put things, I have letters from my grandmother after World War II, she was involved in some charitable organizations who were sending things to Japan, to Germany, and, and then they received letters back. And I have those letters and I put them in these plastic sleeves. Now you can get at the office supply type stores, um, acid-free sleeves, right? Pretty easily. You wanna make sure that they, they're, and I even put these words up here because I knew somebody would say, how do you spell that? Polyester, polypropylene and polyethylene. Right, so those are good, good words. There's PVC, which is polyvinyl chloride, and that's a bad one, right? So most of the ones that are at office supply, though, are good for use with this, but just check out the box. Um, be aware too, like at scrapbook stores, uh, they have a product that says it's archival or archivers, they call it, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's, they're using the word and it's kind of tricky because that doesn't mean that the product is archive quality. So just always read the package. Look for the good words, right? The good polys, you know, and hopefully not the bad polyvinyl, you know, chloride that you don't want. Um, it, it emits hydrochloric acid over time, which is problematic, obviously. Another solution, like um, say with the autograph book, that Roz was talking about. In order to preserve it to where the acid doesn't leak through, something you can do is get acid-free paper and put it in between the pages. And that, have you ever seen, okay, look, if you notice the image that I have up um, and I'm pointing at where it is for me and it's probably not where it is for you, but um, let me see if I can zoom again here. You, you've seen bleed through. I see it with the newspapers, right? On the microfilm, the older newspapers, you see the bleed through sometimes from the other page. See, that's what acid does over time to a document. Mm -hmm. So one thing you wanna do with letters is take them out of the envelope. The envelope's acidic. So you want to take it out of the envelope, put something in between. I, I have it in the same sleeve, but put something in between that sleeve so they're not touching each other, like a piece of acid free paper. Another thing to be aware of over time, the documents you're protecting actually will make the acid free paper acidic. So about two, three years, you want to check it to make sure it's still acid free. And I'll show you how to do that too. So it's a weird dance here to go from slide to slide down and then over. All right. Acid free folders and boxes. Um, I'll show you some examples of those as well. 
label things. Ah, oh. and we will get a little bit more into labeling because you got to be very careful when you label pictures because ink pens can be acidic. And you write on the back of a picture with ink. Who's done that? <laughs> I, I've used a regular ink pen. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And just for posterity, pretty much everybody raised their hand. <laughs> that we could see. Um, that, that ink is acidic and it will eat through onto the other side over time. So you got to be careful what you write on them with. And I'll give you some options. But labeling, because if you're passing this stuff on, I have so many pictures, and I'm sure everybody would raise their hand for this too. Family pictures that you don't know who's in them. You look at it and you're like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I think this, these are my grandparents, <laughs> but nobody labeled them. Um, you can put them in the sleeves and put the label above them so that it's not on the picture. And that's another option or digitize. If you digitize it, you can actually name the file who's in the picture and then share it with others. That's a good protection too. Um, I, I will mention it on a slide at some point, but um, if there's a fire, if you digitized it and you shared it with others, that, that picture is not lost. You may have lost the original, but you didn't lose that history, not completely at least. So that's something, plus everybody gets to share in that. I mean, my Cousins have some pictures of our family and I have pictures. And wouldn't it be nice if we all had all the pictures and knew who everyone was? That would be great. <laughs> I've, shared a, I've shared a lot of pictures on Find a Grave. Yes, I love Find a Grave. A free site where other family mm -hmm. members sometime yeah. in the future could find it. Mm -hmm. Yep, and I, I love that about Find a Grave that it's not just showing pictures of gravestones. Mm -hmm. So um, if you're gonna display an image, display a copy, especially today. Um, they recommend that because the sun, unless you have UV glass in a frame, and I will show you an example later of what I mean by the by deterioration that happens within the frame. But yeah, you, you can get a copy scanned and made, and then you're not gonna ruin that original with sun degradation. And here's a note from what Mandy sent me. Pretty much if it smells like plastic, it isn't safe. So there you go, from, from Mandy. <laughs> it's off gassing. Um, also think about where, if you're, if you're storing them upright, do you have enough things up against them? Because if you store something upright and there's not enough to hold it, have you ever had that where something warps or kind of turns because, so in that case, you may want to store them flat. So you're not changing Polaroids, anybody have Polaroids? If you do, scan them now. <laughs> they, they weren't made to last, they deteriorate over time. I know it's a trend too. They, they have new Polaroid cameras out, kind of playing on that retro theme, but those are for fun. And if you really want that image, scan it. <laughs> Scrapbooks also copy. Newspapers, they're, the paper that newspapers printed on is highly acidic and it deteriorates quickly. So if you have a newspaper clipping that you want, like, because it talks about a family member or you know yourself or history, make sure you scan it so that you have that over time because it, they will deteriorate pretty quickly. They weren't made to last that long. Storage. Environment is important, right? We already talked about all the little acid-free folders and sleeves and boxes, and I'll show you one of those acid-free boxes here in a minute. But what about the place you're putting them? Once you have it in this box, here, I will break from the mold box. This is a type, one type. There are photo-sized ones. There are all different shapes and sizes. This is for file folders. So if you have documents, you can put them in acid-free folders and then line them up in the box. And we use these at the library for the stuff that we collect. And these boxes are acid-free, then acid-free folders. You can go crazy and put acid-free paper then in, however you wanna do it, but these can be ordered online. Gaylord is one of the suppliers. I think Amazon probably has some 
But once you're beyond those, then you got to think about where, right? Um, avoid storing in the garage or the attic. <laughs> Sorry, Roz. <laughs> basement or near plumbing because I mean in the ideal world it might be okay but your plumbing breaks and it's right beside your storage closet it could be disastrous um humi humidity moisture that's a problem because of mold sunlight insects are also issues so you want to find somewhere to store stuff that's consistently here's a problem in my house consistently 69 to 72 degrees my husband likes it 60. If I don't watch him, he will turn the temperature in my house down to 60 degrees. I think I'm getting sick and I'm just cold. I may have mentioned this before. So to find that place that's 69 to 72 degrees and 30 to 50% humidity is kind of key or as close to that as you can get. I have a, a study upstairs and I store my stuff in the closet in the study. So it's the second floor. I feel like the most consistent temperature in the house if there was an issue like a flood, second story, right? Um, no direct sunlight unless you have UV glass. Fluorescent lighting is also bad. So, you know, some people, anybody have like a fireproof box that they keep some things in? Okay, so Jill does. Yeah, because that, that can be one option, right? Because if there is a fire, we had somebody was in talking to me because they were very upset because they had a fire in their home and whoever the insurance company sent in to clean it up, just everything got family photos, everything. So I think that would be devastating. Um, store, like I said, upstairs, I think I covered that. So any questions at this point? Anybody experience any of these things firsthand? My mother did. She um, was away, or I'm sorry, her husband was away, my father, and he was on the road working. And they had a basement flood. And she didn't call him. Those were the, that was the 40s, you know, or the mm -hmm. 30s. We just didn't call people long distance. And um, when she told him on the phone uh, later when he came home, she said, this is what happened. And I threw them all out and he went ballistic, but they were really her family, not his. But he said, you know, I grew up in a photography studio. I helped my mother and there, you, all you had to do was wash them. So that's why I don't have any family photos on my mother's side. And I'm desperately trying to find some. She thought she was cleaning up, but <laughs> You know, sometimes yeah. things can be done, but if somebody gives you the opportunity, you know, like that company came in and they just threw it all away and they, they were devastated because they, all these things, they were like, even if it smelled like smoke, it was my family's picture. I could have scanned it. I could have. So it's probably a good idea to do that in advance. I don't think they'd want to see me if they did that to me. I probably wouldn't be very happy with them. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to put this slide up and then take a second, look at it, and then we're going to go through these items. So I want to take that off and make it to where you can see me a little better, and then I'll put this back up because um, I'm going to show you these items. I wish I could show them to you and pass them around and you could, you know, really see them, but one of these days soon. So, all right, I'm gonna stop sharing. <clears throat> all right, everybody sees me all big now, great. This is just a regular craftsman toolbox, handheld carry around. And I have it filled with my home archive stuff. My husband stole my last one and turned it into this, a dirty mess, right? So I had to piece this all back together, create a new preservation kit with a new toolbox that he bought me to replace that one. 
but I have, you know, just the regular lift out and I'll show you. I pulled out some of the stuff here and I'll show you. Nothing fancy. It was on sale, pretty cheap. So number two, pencil. We're it seems like we're going back to school. We're preparing ahead for uh, our next presentation on mass on schools. Number two, pencil. One option. Um, you want something soft, right? To write on the back of a picture so it doesn't leave an indentation, so it's not going to bleed through acid wise. Number two, pencil, soft is an option. They make something called an identa pen. Right, that's a special pen. I have a version that's kind of like that. Pigment ink, acid-free, archival quality. It's, it's uh, from a different company, but it's very similar. It has the wider side and the fine side, but things like this are what you would want to write on a picture with so it doesn't bleed through to the other side and ruin your picture. And do I have pictures with regular pen where I've written on the back of them? To do. <laughs> to do the live and learn process, right? Um, ink, like I said, is acidic. So we want to be careful of that. It also leaves an indent that over time with the acid and the indent. Brushes. They sell some brushes that you can buy that are special. But do you have to use special? This is a makeup brush. Works just fine, right? For dusting things off, cleaning, right? Um, I've got some books I need to clean up. So I'm going to be using this and I've got, can you guys see this at all? It's a little vacuum cleaner attachment. So I've got a bunch of this little sized attachments that were made for, they came with my regular vacuum years ago and they're made for a car, for cleaning a car. And you can use them for vacuuming stuff off books. Like if you've got mold and or build up on a book, it will gently clean it off, right? Versus trying to use a full force vacuum, right? So I do have some of these in my kit. I have a soot and dirt cleaning sponge, which was actually kind of hard to find, but you gotta be careful with those. Um, don't use it on pencil because it actually erases it. <laughs> so you don't wanna do that, but it's a, I'm trying to make it to where you guys can see it. Soot and dirt remover. My husband saw on the this when he bought the new ones for me uh, that it takes off pet hair. So he bought extras. <laughs> <laughs> A micro spatula. This is what I was talking about earlier. Can you guys see that at all? It's a little spatula that you can use, like if you're trying to get an old picture out of a photo album to preserve it, one of those old sticky magnetic ones, uh, you can use it to kind of get in there without hurting the picture. I got this on Amazon for like $7, I think, but just a little spatula. It comes in handy for working with things. When you're trying to get a document out of an old frame or uh, you know, a picture out of an old sticky album, it's got two flat ends that are shaped a little differently. So you can kind of get in there without using your fingers. I already talked about the white cotton gloves. Um, pH test marker. These are kind of getting kind of hard to find, but this is kind of fun. So I said you wait a couple of years and then the acid-free paper becomes acidic or the folders, you have acid-free folders they become acidic over time from the documents you're storing in them. And this is a marker that lets you test it. Now, I think it's kind of counterintuitive in some ways, but it tests the pH level in the paper. But if it's purple, it's good. If it's yellow, it's not. And I get that mixed up in my head. I don't know, can you guys see it all the purple that's already on this one? Let's try to make that a little darker. This one's really thin. Ones I've had in the past have been thicker and I like those a little better because they're a little easier to... So this is an archival folder. So we should expect that it will come out purple. So it shows up purple. I know this is safe for my documents. 
If I'd been storing something in this a long time, I would test it in here because that's where the acid's going to kind of get into it. So I would do a line through here, purple. Okay, I'm good to go. Kind of bugs me that now I have a purple line on my folder, but that's just me. But at least you know it's safe. Where regular ones will show up yellow. So I, I took a regular manila envelope like that we would use to store in our files and did it and it was definitely yellow. So if you don't want to invest in these, what's, what, what is it that is your option? It's kind of a quiz. Just replace, quiz. It. Just replace it. You could replace it. You probably don't want to use, like with the other ones, if you could get acid-free paper, because that's a little cheaper, just put acid-free paper mm -hmm. here. Yeah. Happy girl. <laughs> Acid free sleeves, you said, but they're, I'm yeah. sure they might have cost more. I don't know. Um, honestly, <laughs> sleeves are something that. Did close that. You didn't. What I. Do anything else, right? Got from the store was fine. Like, I bought some from Office Max years ago. And they're all fine. So um, those are a little easier to find in, you know, because they kind of come that way often. Just watch out for that PVC or, you know, anything that would be negative. But the ones I have at home that I bought just at the office supply store actually are fine. Um, folders, the regular manila folders are not acid free. Everyone I tested came out yellow. So these are a little bit pricier. I'm actually trying to buy some of these um, for library, so I've been pricing them. The kind that I like that have this straight across strip instead of the tab are a lot more expensive, but they do have ones on Amazon that are like half the price of this kind that have the old like middle side tabs, those type folders. So you can get them, but if you want to, you can just get acid-free paper and insert it. Cheesecloth, so many uses for cheesecloth, yeah. When you're vacuuming something, um, this can be textiles. If you have say an old dress or an old quilt and you wanna, it's got some stuff on it, you can put cheesecloth on and then vacuum through the cheesecloth and it helps protect the item so that you can clean the dust off of it because you're vacuuming through the cheesecloth trickily, you know, with some ha extra hands probably to hold the cheesecloth down, but it's one thing you can use it for. Yeah, I could use it with these small attachments too to make it a little bit more gentle. Anybody have an old quilt, an old family quilt that they have? Yeah. How do you store it? Um, not well. <laughs> <laughs> no, mine's, mine's folded. Mine's in bad shape though. I need someone to like replace the backing on it because it's got holes from people not being gentle with it. It was made for me when I was a kid too. So the back of it is uh, Raggedy Ann and Andy, little characters. So I, I need like a new backing to update it, but I would love to use it. But you got to weigh that out, right? Like, how can I use this? Sun is important, right? That kind of stuff. Um, but textiles, you know, old dresses. I have my prom dress and I didn't think of it as vintage until High school students recently asked to borrow it because they were having a retro prom. <laughs> There's my moment, right? I'm like, oh, my, my prom dress is retro because I still have it. So, <laughs> all right. Let me Somebody go gave me my aunt brought me these ancient pillows, and she did not know. She said, "I'm sure somebody made them in the family." She did not know who. Oh, they were, they were horrible looking. I mean, they had these big spots and I thought who would save something like this? But it occurs to me that maybe that's the, you know, that's the bad damage from keeping them in plastic bags, things like that. But guess what? I did something recently. I restored fabric. Ooh. It was fun. Um, I had a piece of fabric that was on a bench that had belonged to my husband's grandparents. And it was time worn from uh, just dirt, right? Dirt, there was a big orange stain on it. I don't know what that was. 
And I actually, now here's the thing. If it didn't work out, okay, fine, right? But it, it's nice to have the, the piece of fabric that they had. So I soaked it in Oxy. And when I say I soaked it, I soaked it for two weeks in Oxy. Going down every once in a while, gently. I read this on a, on a site for restoring and cleaning up fabric. And I'd used Oxy before, so I was skeptical. But the key was the length of time, I think. I did change the water once, like at the one week mark, just because I couldn't handle it, right? Because it was kind of gross looking. <laughs> I'm like, surely that's going to go back into it. But I got all of those stains, all the dirt out. It looks like, I can't say a brand new piece of fabric, but the fabric was completely restored. Oh. So I was very happy and excited about that. I'm like, ooh, I got a trick. <laughs> so yay, Oxy. They are not a sponsor. N none of these are. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go back and try to share my screen again here. There we are. Maybe. You guys <clears throat> see the PowerPoint again? Yes. Okay, excellent. How are we on time? Okay, okay. Oh, the tape. I didn't show the tape. I showed it earlier. There's document repair tape. And this is um, an emergency only because you saw what happens with tape on documents, that yellowing. They do have some different acid-free tapes. Program. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear them, but they're having a loud conversation right outside the door. So if you're going to use tape on something, you weigh it out. You're the archivist here, right? You know what, what you want to happen to these items. So if you need to use tape, use acid-free tape, special mending tape that's created for that. So there's acid-free corners. Also, and I'm going to be a little in this picture, but I have some, right, the acid-free corners. Uh, I just got it like a scrapbook store. Mounting sleeves are another option to get rid of those sticky books. Acid-free paper I already talked about, acid-free sleeves. You can get them with or without three hole punches. If you look at the top right, you can see how they're kind of using a sleeve to put the picture in to display it. As of three boxes, I already showed you the, the one box. Um, where can you find them? Gaylord Archival is where I get a lot of that stuff from, or Demco is kind of now, if you go to their website. But scrapbook and craft stores do have some of this stuff. You just have to look at the packaging. You have to see if it has any of the bad stuff in it. Um, office supply stores, sleeves there should be fine. So now, modern keepsakes. We're all a little bit more familiar. We think of mementos and uh, for family of those old pictures and the old letters and all of that. But how many of you take pictures on a smartphone? Yeah. What about those? How do we protect those? My sister went on a vacation and while she was in Hawaii, her phone got stolen. Anything that wasn't backed up, she lost. So you can turn on, and this is where we're gonna kind of partner with the tech department. They're going to post some videos here. They're done, they just have to be put up probably within the next week. Um, to break down how to do that. Like if you want to store it in the cloud it, from your phone, if you want to store it, you know, they're going to do some small instructional videos for you. If that's something you want to make sure you're getting your pictures off your phone and getting them correctly, they're going to do some instructional YouTube videos that you can find on the Maslin Public Library YouTube site. And those should be up probably within the next week because um, I'm not going to get into the tech part of it, but, you know, photos, I've got tons, I've got so many pictures because your phone is right there. I bought a digital camera back in 2014, but I rarely carry it. 
I always have my phone. So family get togethers, um, whatever, I, it ends up on my smartphone. And unless I have it set up to back up to a cloud, then I need to plug that in and back up those pictures regularly, which can get overwhelming. You could end up with multiples, which is what's happened to me in the past where I'm like, oh my gosh, I've got the same picture five times. And you got to figure out which one you want to keep. Then I accidentally one time erased the wrong ones. Size um, of the picture, you want to look at it and say the bigger one because the file size matters when you go to reprint. Like if you erase the original larger size, you'll never be able to make a print from it because it would be grainy. Anybody experienced that where they tried to go make a print? Yeah, and it was grainy and you couldn't figure out what, well, it's that resolution, I guess. There's a techie term. Um, <laughs> so that's important too with photos. Um, videos, I, I don't have it up here, but on my notes, I actually have film reel. Anybody have any old film reel? I don't know whether I'd call that a modern keepsake or not. Yeah, Roz does. Oh so yeah. Yeah, they have places that can transfer those for you. Um, I'm on the fence about whether I consider that to be a modern keepsake or traditional keepsake though. Uh, what do you guys think? Which category? <laughs> kind of modern. Yeah. <laughs> 20th century, right? VHS, I've gotten some of those transferred uh, over to DVD. But even DVDs are kind of, notice everybody streams everything now. So I'm a little concerned for the future of my family movies on DVD. So now I'm wondering if I shouldn't have those on a file somewhere, like a hard drive. What about communication? Anybody, okay, who has old letters from their, from their ancestors that they wrote somebody? Okay, yeah. And aren't those interesting to read, to find out about their lives? What do we have now? Email. Oh, email. Email. Text. Should we be saving some of those things? And I'll leave that up to you, whether you think your texts are, you know, future generation worthy. But these are the letters of today, aren't they? So maybe think about whether there's certain conversations with say with relatives or even friends that you might want to preserve. Because if it had been a written letter, you would have preserved it in the past, right? So just something to think about. Do we want to preserve some of this stuff? No, I probably, the memes my nephews send me, I don't need to preserve that. <laughs> Although it could say something about today's society to people in the future, right? <laughs> All right, where are we? Okay, so how and what? I kind of covered this one on the last one. Look at me stealing my own thunder. Um, photos, you know, back up and store in multiple places. I have an external hard drive at home and I saved everything there. And then my external hard drive stopped working. So I didn't think that through very well. Luckily I brought it in and they were able to, to get it open here. So, okay, note to self, do not just save on one external hard drive. <laughs> save it in the cloud and an external hard drive and maybe a flash drive too. <laughs> I don't know. Auto backup, that's something you can do on your phone. Again, that's a little more technical. We'll let the technology department handle that part. But you can have it set up to back up to a cloud automatically as you're taking pictures. Do you guys have that feature set up? Think. Yeah. I don't think I do. Yeah. See, if my but, sister was, was using that in Hawaii, she'd have pictures. <laughs> so as Christine, long as you're connected. Christine, um, mm -hmm. on the family search site, yes. they have a way, they want you to upload your things like that and you can keep them private, but they would prefer that you not but you can do it somehow and um, then it'll be available for people in the future. They'll keep up and you can trust family search, I would say. Yeah, um, family search ancestry you can load, but ancestry has a little bit more, it's a little bit more individualized. You actually have to, I don't know, even public. I've seen some images that other people have posted. So, but it's all in the settings there. They're a little bit, proprietary on some of that. Um, 
but yeah, and, and digital family archives, that's kind of in that line. I have one up here, Collection Air, and I'm not just putting this up here because like the owners, like my ninth cousin, something removed. Um, I know this from Roots Tech, <laughs> but it is kind of a cool site. And I posted a, an image there that shows all the different cloud sites that you can bring together in one place. And it's, it is kind of cool. Um, it has a family tree element to it as well. It's called Collection Air. Um, collectionair.com is the site. I don't know. Does anybody know of any others that are similar to Collection Air? Because I, I know like for pictures, for getting them printed or scrapbook type things made, my canvas, Shutterfly, Snapfish, there's, Snapfish, there's tons of them. Uh, paper culture even is an eco-friendly one. Um, but does anybody know of any digital family archives like Collection Air? I just don't want to be like only choosing them, right? Showing showing favoritism to my aunt or to my uh, relative. Now, is this going to mess everything up? I'm going to um, ignore that. <laughs> I got to move the image over and up. There we go. See, there it is, my ninth cousin. <laughs> oh. um, I do have a login with them. Let me see if I can remember what it is. Remembering a password, yeah. Oh, look at that, I did remember. So they have a tutorial here, I'll go into that because I think it shows the tree. See, it has a family tree, you can upload your file into here. But I think it, because it's a picture focused thing, it does a little better job than some of the family tree based sites for displaying family memorabilia. So like you click on the person, I don't really need the tutorial at this point. Okay, the link between them so you can have different. So you have memories under different people. I guess I should have looked because it tells you how many, zero. So then you go down, I'm gonna find somebody who has some memories. Ah, here we go. William and Loretta, they have some memories. So the best of William and Loretta, you can kind of put them into categories like home movies, family vacations. You can kind of categorize them as you want. And then I think there is a way to view it. You can do a timeline. So, I mean, there's a lot of options in there that kind of connect to family tree style, but having all this stuff, and I know you can upload a lot of this into Ancestry, but I don't know that it has the same organizational features. Let me see. This one, it's just a funny story about two brothers who were suspected of carrying whiskey during prohibition and they were searched and they ended up getting killed. And yeah, so this person is they saved this article, the story about this, these family members, right? The history of the brothers. Obviously, I read it. I just, I don't know. I think it's kind of a neat idea. I need to find, obviously, I haven't done much with my personal information. And they have just a basic free account, but then obviously, like everything else, the paid version. Like I spend much more time on it. I was looking for, there's a certain screen where they have like a collage of your memorabilia, right? And I thought that was kind of cool, but I'm not exactly sure where it's at on here. So 
I haven't played enough with it, I guess. But that's one option. I'm sure there are others out there for digital family archives, videos. Some libraries do have equipment now to transfer VHS to DVD. So if you have old VHS tapes, but you the catch is you have to sit there and monitor it. So if that's a 90 minute tape, it's gonna take 90 minutes. Then you have to sit and watch it. I know Tuscars County, I know Stark County does. We do not as of yet, um, but other libraries do have that. You can pay someone to do it. So it's like a time or money thing. If you wanna pay someone to sit there and watch it so you don't have to for 90 minutes or however long your tape is. Some, you know, I don't know, I think my time might be, I don't know, but you can do it if you've got time. Make multiple copies, share with family. Look, communication, we already talked about that. This is just a, a hard drive picture up to the, at the top that shows an external hard drive that you can put in case your computer. I had somebody in recently whose computer crashed and all their family tree stuff was on it and they couldn't get back into it. Now, obviously with the right tech person, they could get, I'm sure that information out of it. But if you back up all this to a hard drive that can be transferred from computer, like a flash drive, but a, a little more secure version, I guess. Um, it's just an external hard drive. I have all my stuff then I can go from computer to computer. So if your computer crashes, you don't lose all that stuff or have to go to somebody else to get it out of there. So it's a good idea. Here's the final exam. Are you guys ready? Yep. I got I actually got two pages here. So you're gonna tell me what's what I've done wrong. This is around my house. On the far left, you can see a cabinet, and inside that there is a picture of my grandmother who actually passed away on the way home from the hospital having my aunt. So I never met her. And that is an original picture in that frame in that cabinet. What do you think? Sunlight. Sunlight. Sunlight could damage it. Sunlight. Yeah, I need to either get UV glass in there or make a copy. Shame on me. The second one over, shifting gears a little bit, those are pictures that I took when I was in France. Important to me, yeah. Would they maybe be important to, we'll say my nephew, maybe. What do you think? Those are originals. But I do have the digital file and those were printed from a digital file. Am I okay with those? What do you think? Yep. Yeah, because I can reprint pretty much what I have there. Yay. This is a picture box on the floor here, though, that has an original picture in the top of it that probably is getting a little sunlight. Years ago, before I had any of my training that I've had now, I made this I went to a scrapbooking party. And if anybody knows me well, they'll know my attention span is not the greatest. So I'm better at one page than a whole book, right? So I did this picture frame that has a postcard that my grandfather sent from France home to his family when he was in service, when he was in the war. And then, so it was in Paris and then my picture there is of him home on leave. He's in his uniform with my mother as a very little girl. I I could zoom in on this, couldn't I? So I use scrapbooking tools. So those are probably acid free stuff that I used. But what, what do we see as some of the problems here? If they're the originals, you might end up with trouble. Yeah. You need to scan I them. 
I used originals. And okay, so the glue that I used was probably acid free because it was a scrapbooking party, but I don't know that the paper that I put it on was acid free. <sighs> so, I mean, I love it, right? It's Paris and then, you know, I got the year there, but probably not the best. All right, let's see, can I, oh, here we go. I'll just leave it this way. This here, the clock is a family keepsake. It was my husband's family. Um, it needs a little restoration work, I will say. The pictures yep, on the mantle, right in front of the, yes, that is a replica medieval shield. I did a, sem a uh, seminar or workshop for college students and everybody got to decorate their own authentic, well, you know, replica of a medieval shield. So that was my husband's. And in front of that, I have a picture of my grandma in a frame that's the original frame that has a crack down the front of it. And then a picture of my dad from high school. I'm not getting good grades today, am I? <laughs> I really need to get one that out of that old photo frame because it could be stuck to the glass by now, especially with the sun and all of that. I mean, a clock, you want to display a clock. So I, I mean, I can't imagine sticking that away. I've got two picture windows in this room. I can't imagine getting it out of the sun, but probably should put some kind of protectant on it. Oh, there, I had a close up of the picture. See the crack? So then we go. The first picture here, this is my file cabinet. And yes, those are Abe Lincoln, Ulysses S. Grant, and Robert E. Lee finger puppets. That's my storage cabinet in my study in the closet. So this is where I keep the things that I have, you know, in sleeves. And I have them labeled and then some of the items you can see the sleeves, these type of sleeves just came from, I believe these ones came from Office Max, but I did something wrong here. I'm, I'm trying, I'm moving towards good, but years ago when I put this in the sleeve, what did I do wrong? Not acid free. I took it out of the envelope, but the envelope's right up against it. I didn't put a piece of acid-free paper in between it. I will be rectifying those things soon, but. This is a family recipe book. Handwritten recipes from my grandma. Hmm, I don't even wanna talk about all the problems with, with how I'm storing that. You guys got some stuff stored like that? My or my alone? Yeah. I do. <laughs> I need to scan them. That's on my agenda. There's my the book there that I showed before. That was the book that my great great grandfather wrote. Oh, really? Cool. Garfield. Yes. The original copy. The silhouette image here, sitting on my bookshelf out in the sunlight. I'm just going to tell you right now, see the little spot on my poor uncle's face? Sun damage from being in a frame all those years without UV protection. I'm sure when they got this made, they weren't thinking about that, right? But something I need to take care of. I just actually acquired these. So you can see the little spot. So I need to get it out of that glass if it's not stuck to it already. I want to scan them. Let's 
So I guess I didn't give you pictures of all of any of the things I'm doing right. So <laughs> it's hard for you to grade me today, but based on these pictures, <laughs> the big thing I wanted to show with the pictures is that I'm not perfect. I know the ideas. That doesn't mean that you know I'm preaching at you. This is what you should do, and and you're just wrong if you didn't, right? I'm just giving you some thoughts on you know what you can do to better protect your your family heirlooms. Any questions, thoughts, experiences? Okay, I have a question. What are you going to do with the recipe book? Uh, you can scan it and there are books that you can add. Snapfish can make you books. Um, what are you planning to do with the physical piece? Mostly I want to get it scanned, but then get it into protective. Um, there's a debate too. Okay, I have an old scrapbook that was my mother's that, and I have one of my, from my, fa when my father was little. And they're the old school paper kind, not the sticky magnetic, but the old photo corner, right? Mm -hmm. But acidic paper, all of that, because they're from the 40s and 50s, right? There's debates, right? How do you, do you, if you take all that stuff out to protect it, you lose their original presentation. So if I take my grandmother's recipes out of the book, I lose her thinking, right? As she organized and put those recipes together in some way. So I could take them out and put them in sleeves, but I then I, again, lose the part of her that put it together. So I haven't decided. What do you guys think? You're overthinking it. You're preserving it. You're preserving it. That's it. <laughs> I like that. You're overthinking. Sorry. It. I, I haven't heard that ever in my life, Jill. Never. Not once. <laughs> You're overthinking it. Hmm. <laughs> maybe it just comes, maybe that's why I landed where I did. You know, I overthink things. <laughs> so yeah, I, I want to scan them for sure. I really kind of want to get into some historic recipes. I kind of wanted to do something with maybe Maslin Local History Genealogy Society where we look at recipes that have been passed down because that shows family history and it shows, you know, maybe when we can get back together here soon, you know, have a party like based on recipes that are handed down, right? And look at how that shows local history as well, right? Area history, um, the different types of people that have settled in this area are going to be reflected in the different foods and the different recipes we have from family members. So I think that would be kind of cool to investigate. Did that answer your question? Sort of, overthinking it a little bit. Oh, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. I do have the coming soon slide up here for you to um, showing what we're doing, both the library and I didn't specify on there. I just realized the ones that are Maslin Local History Genealogy Society. Um, the first two are library school days in Maslin, Roz. Yeah. I'll be working with her on Friday, getting ready for that. Um, July 7th, going to look at the history of Maslin schools. So spread the word. That's going to be a Zoom program. Historic Churches of Maslin coming in August is also Maslin Local History Genealogy Society. We have four churches, and the churches are what? St. Timothy's, St. Joe's, St. Joseph's. What else? Um, first, is it First Methodist? And what was the last one? St. Mary's, I believe. Is it St. Mary's? I know there are two Catholic churches, a Methodist and Lutheran, I believe. We're hoping to do like a second part, maybe next year that includes some other ones, but that's August 4th. And we have speakers from these churches um, and some of the people from the Mass and Local History Genealogy Society presenting the history of the churches. And then I'm debating on get a clue, evaluating evidence, how we wanna do it. Cause maybe by September we could do a workshop 
or a hybrid where I do partly online for people who still want to be online with it and then have, I haven't figured that one out yet, but I got to do it soon because I have to have it by the beginning of next month. And then home for the holidays, house history, November 3rd, about researching your home. So that's what's coming up. And then of course, like I said, be sure to watch the technology department's videos if you want more information on how to back up those files. So that is officially all I have today. Anybody have anything else they want to add? And we kind of talked about things as we went, so. Well, thank you for joining me today. I know I had a couple people who had last minute things come up so they couldn't be here, but uh, I appreciate those of you who are here. I know this isn't our desired format, but I'm glad you could be here. Thank you, very informative. All right. That was very helpful. And it's good to know that we're not the only ones who haven't done things, you know, by the book, the new book. <laughs> You can know the you know way to do it and still not do it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that's it why I want you guys to know. I'm not perfect. I'm not preaching at you. I'm just saying, eh, maybe consider this. And maybe I should too. <laughs> oh, it's so much to do though. I mean, I don't have time to sit all day long for weeks on end going through all that stuff so yeah just one step at a time i guess figure out what your most important item is what means you know what's that one thing you know my sister and i always talk about if there was a fire she's always like i would grab my i would grab grandma's picture from when she was a little girl because it's a big framed picture of her and her brothers from when they were little right when they first came to the u.s and so if there was a fire she'd grab that on her way out you know so what's that one item <laughs> So, yeah, always that breaks. Work. What was that, Rob? Oh, I was just going to say it always breaks my heart when I see those, you know, tornadoes that's on the news and these people standing there and they've lost everything. And you just hope that there was something in a safety deposit box somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because all those family memories and everything, they're kind of gone unless you've spread them. Like I know different cousins have different things in my family. So maybe I'd be able to get some digital, but yeah, definitely. I'm definitely going to be taking a look at that silhouette though. Cause I can see the sun damage, right? Eating at the, you know, my poor uncle's face. All right. Well, this is the final end. Is that a question? This will be the formal end of the program. So if anybody from the Massillon Local History Genealogy Society has anything to talk about, we can have a moment afterwards for them to compare notes. But otherwise, this is the end of our program today. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're very welcome.